In this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you why you're animating text wrong, and we're going to do it better with text animators. And you're going to learn how to do this, or this, or this, using just one layer. I eat. Does that sound good? Then let's do it. Okay, so before we get started, I recommend reorganizing your windows a little bit so that you have a vertical layout. Doesn't matter what kind of comp size you use or anything. However, once we start getting in here, um, you're just gonna need to see a lot of vertical real estate. You're not having a lot of layers or keyframes or anything. Um, you just need to see a lot of stuff here on the left-hand side. All right, I'll link if you don't know how to do this. Click this video wherever it appears on the screen, link in the description, and it will show you how to move around your windows so that you can do this easily. All right, let's get into it. If you wanna follow along, this project file and all my others are available for free to download. Link is in the description. Cool, so the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to go to composition, composition settings, and under your 3D renderer here, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the renderer is set as Cinema 4D. It's probably under Classic 3D right now. We wanna do Cinema 4D so we can get some nice 3D action going. All right, so now let's go ahead and right click, add a new text, all right? And again, if you've uh, rearranged some stuff, you might get some, some windows popping up in some funky areas. So we'll just go ahead and just, might have to move them around. Um, wherever. So type whatever text you want. It does not matter. You can change it later. I'm going to go ahead and just type flip. Cool. And you can click Y to move the anchor point here. It doesn't really matter at this stage where the anchor point is. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is click this arrow drop down, drop down the text, and we'll go to more options. And here we have grouping alignment. We want to just move this up so that these little uh, check marks here are in the center of our text. That's going to change like the center point of where the, uh, the text is going to rotate from. That's great. Now let's click this animate here and let's add a new rotation animator. Awesome. And then one thing we want to one more thing we want to do on the animator is click on add property here uh, on our animator and enable per character 3D and what this will allow us to do is rotate every single uh, letter individually in 3D space. Great. Uh, now what I'll do here is you can see since these are flat, I'm going to drop down my material options, sorry, drop down my geometry options and add some depth to them. This extrusion depth, it doesn't really matter. Let's say a clean 100, that looks great. And now what I wanna do is add some color to this. Um, right now, this is all just it's all just black. We want to give this some color. So I uh, will go up here to animate and add a new front color. So click RGB and maybe we'll make this front color to be uh, white. Cool. And we can also add a back color to this because right now you can see that it has no back color. So we'll animate a back color can be the same color, can be a different color. And I did something wrong here. I accidentally added the back color to our first animator. That is not what we want because then it'll be affected by the uh, animation we apply here later. So I'm gonna undo that. So I'm actually just gonna choose it on this second animator here. Back color, boom. I'll make it the same color here. And then what I also want, I think I want a bevel color. So I'll click add and bevel RGB, and we'll make this into uh, a black color. Can't currently see the bevel, so we'll add it onto the bevel style. Let's say uh, convex, and then crank this up to 10, and now we have this nice cool outline. Gives it a nice graphic effect. All right, let's add some animation to this. So under our first animator here, let's go ahead and call this rotation and drop down this range selector here and drop down advanced. Boom, now we have all of our options here. So what we wanna do is we want to animate the X rotation to give it this flip, right? So I'm gonna 
just put everything on zero first. And I want to, let's say, make this do one full flip around, okay? So I'm gonna put a one here on the X rotation. Now, if I do my timeline, nothing happened, but we don't actually want to keyframe this. We just want to tell it that it's gonna do this one full flip, and then we're gonna animate the offset here like this, all right? So we'll put a one there, and then we'll animate the offset from negative 100 up to positive 100 like this and then we'll play it looks pretty good am i right all right obviously that's not what we want to happen so we need to change um the shape that this animation is going through it right now it's on square which means that a square is getting sent through it so we want to change this to ramp down and now it kind of changes the easing shape that gets sent down this, right? It's a nice ramp down in shape. Then what I'll also do is add some ease high and some ease low, 69% respectively. And that just gives it a little nicer of a movement. When in doubt, go with 69%, cannot hurt. So now what I wanna do is I wanna add like a little bit of uh, anticipation as we call in the biz so what I'll do is I'll maybe move these keyframes out a little bit maybe to like one second just to make things easy and maybe I'll make it a little bit shorter so it happens at about one second total time and then we'll duplicate this so grab this whole rotation animator and click controller command D now we have a second one what we'll do is we'll basically just extend these keyframes out a little bit like this and like this, so it's kind of covering the uh, in and out of the one before it. And we'll change this rotation number here. So instead of having it be one, we'll, we'll make it be negative 25. So then what this will do is it'll basically tell it to rock back before it lurches forward like that. All right. And then what we also want to do is we want to change this shape. So instead of ramp down, let's change it to something like smooth. I'll bring in my uh, work area a little bit and we'll see what that looks like. That's pretty cool. It kind of gives it this ease and anticipation, but I think right now we are doing ourselves a disservice by having this ease since we're already applying the, the shape of smooth. So let's just turn off our ease high and our ease low and try it again. And that looks pretty good. And you can see this P is taking his good old time getting back in place here. So all we really gotta do is just nudge him in there a little bit and that should do the trick. So then if we wanna add a little hop to all this, then all we really gotta do is just selecting this uh, rotation here. We can just start adding other properties to this. So let's add a position here and let's say maybe we wanna uh, add on some, you know, negative 200 position up here. And now this will basically just tell our layers to do a little hop up, uh, our letters hop up like this. And you could do this with, you know, anything. If you want them to scale up, if you want them to get, change color, if you want them to change opacity, etc. Quick sidebar, if you're kind of confused about what's actually happening here, an easy way to think about it is that this animator is the end point that we're trying to achieve. So as you can see here, I have the opacity at zero and the front color at red. So we are going to end up here at a red text and an opacity at zero if I put this at 50%, then it'll be 50% and a red color, right? And we'll go down to 50% red. If I added on a scale here and put the scale down, that's the end point that we're going to achieve. If we actually change the mode here to be something like subtract, now it's going to invert that and subtract everything. Kind of like how, you know, this is exactly how blending modes work. Same kind of idea. Um, so, Back to the lesson. And so this looks really good already, but 
All we have to do from here is basically keep adding on little touches that kind of reinforce this movement. So what I'll do is maybe I'll add a new null object like this and maybe, maybe move this to the center here and I'll uh, pick whip my flip to this and I'll make this move up and down alongside my flip. So when my flip is down, the null is down. When my flip is up, the null moves up and then it comes back down when the flip comes down like this. And maybe I'll overshoot it a little bit and then I'll open the graph editor and I'll select everything and I'll apply some easy ease and let me scroll in a little bit here and we'll just make it a little more ease like this and then play it back that just gives it a little more bounciness and what we could do again we could select our text layer here click R and add some you know, rotation like this, that kind of mimics the um, same kind of movement as our null object. So maybe we'll say on when it's down, it's back 10, when it's up, it's forward 10, when it's down, it's back 10 again. And we'll open up the graph editor and do the same kind of easing that we just did like that crunch these peaks and valleys a little bit. So you add these little kind of accents and now very quickly you have this really fluid natural text. And the great thing about this is now I can take this flip and I'll duplicate it using controller command D and I can move this down and I can just change the text here to be out like this. And maybe I will take this and I will grab all these keyframes and move them just to be over one or two or this way one or two, doesn't really matter. And so it's offset a little bit. Maybe I'll take flip here and I'll click P and push this back into space so it's it feels like it's behind it more. Move it over, move it down. So now that I have this great 3D text comp that's all editable and just so great. Why don't I take this comp here in my project panel, this flip main comp, and turn it into a new comp like this, drag it down here, make it into a new comp. Now I have this all comped and I'll turn it 3D and from here, you know, I can rotate this and if I make sure that I click this continuously rasterize button, now it's a beautiful 3D object. And I'll just go ahead and make a new camera and I'll go ahead and make a new null object and make this null object 3D and attach my camera to it. Personally, I just really like um, using cameras with null objects. You get a little bit better control with it. And now what we can do is we can rotate this uh, camera a little bit on whatever kind of angle that we like. Maybe we'll pull it to the side a little bit like this and, you know, move it over a little bit, something like this. We get a nice little angle to it. Great. And we could, we could add a layer style to this main comp here. How about a stroke? Something like this, a nice colorful stroke. Make it bigger and then remember that we aren't seeing this stroke because we're not in the right render engine in this composition. So we'll go to composition, composition settings and change our render engine back to classic 3D. And now we see our nice stroke here. So we'll make this stroke, maybe we'll make this like uh, 45 pixels and a nice orange color is cool like that cool and we can duplicate this one time pull it behind it and we could change this uh, stroke color to be black and to make it even bigger maybe a hundred pixels like that this is very cool and now if we put this on even more of an angle it's gonna kind of give it this nice like perspective of this stroke that's behind it 
And so if we play this, now we have this great 3D text loop. So this tutorial is actually inspired by Matt Voice, who is a fantastic type illustrator and animator um, who I really, really admire. I've actually done a tutorial about his stuff before. Check it out here. Boom. Um, and specifically this one. And so I don't think that he actually does this uh, in this method that I've shown you in this tutorial. I think that this is all um, broken out letter by letter and it's really finely keyframed and really slick and he really gets in there and does it. That being said, the reason why using text animators is so powerful is because where you lose a little bit of fine-tuned control, um, you just gain so much, so much flexibility. So now if you wanna go back and you wanna change the entire animation, and instead of it flipping forward, you want it to flip, um, you want it to do a twist, or you want it to come forward, or you want it to change colors, you can do that without changing any of the animation. All you have to do is go in and change one little property change one digit um, and no, nothing about the animation timing or anything has changed you just go in and change one of the animators and the whole thing is now completely updated um, plus you can go in and you can save the whole thing as a preset and just apply it to any future text animations you can easily duplicate the layers so you just have so much more flexibility working with text animators so if you like this tutorial then Thank you, I appreciate you, and definitely check out my motion design upgrade course where we do not learn 3D text animation, but we do learn other cool stuff. Uh, and thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.